Welcome to The Vent, Episode 2. I am Christopher Sotelo, and thank you, thank you so much for joining me for this episode, and for the last episode, and for any few th- further episodes. Um, so today's episode, I'm calling Peekaboo ICU. Um, and this is going to be my recollection, my stories of uh, ICU, and uh, just... There's so much that actually went on in ICU that I'm gonna try and condense it, put it down to the best, some of the funniest, maybe some of the shittiest um, situations that I went through, made it through. So uh, with that being said, let's get it started. So ICU, um, obviously I was in ICU immediately following my surgery. Um, And uh, after my surgery, well, before my surgery, um, I didn't know it, but I had actually cracked my C1 and I had shattered out my C6. And the C1 vertebrae is a vertebrae that you don't really mess around with. And so with that being cracked, the doctors told my family that there was a less than 5% chance that I would move anything other than my eyeballs which really, really scared the shit out of them. And it would have scared the shit out of me had they told me, but I'm glad they didn't. Um, So uh, I had the surgery and then I'm in ICU and my family had been coming in and out. I was still knocked out um, with the anesthesia. Um, And so um, when I woke up, my sister was in my room with me and I woke up and I, I, I remember waking up and kind of moving my arms just a little bit outwards. There was blankets on top of me and I moved my arms outward just a little bit. And my sister starts freaking out. She's so excited, she's ecstatic that I can move my arms. But um, a couple hours passed by and I woke up and I was able to move my arms again and that really relieved the, the a little bit of stress that my family was feeling from the uh, initial shock and all of of what really was gonna, my life was going to be like. Um, And so after that, um, I was all right for a couple of days. And then, um, well, I'll get into what I remember and then I'll let you know how it actually, what was actually going on. So what I remember was um, like day two or three, I had, everything was fine. Uh, my sister had fed me um, some spaghetti that my, my aunt had made. And, um, and then I remember being in the room. It was my dad and my little brother. And I remember the room, it felt really tense in the room. And um, the nurses and doctors were kind of freaking out because they, they it, was, it was something to do with my breathing. And I, I didn't feel like I was having trouble breathing, but apparently the numbers that I was putting out on the machine with everything they were monitoring, they were way too low. And um, so they kept trying to put these different apparatuses on my mouth to help me breathe. And then I remember going into a panic attack and then um, everything just went black. That's all I remember. Everything just blacked out. And so what my dad and my little brother have told me is that I was laying there in bed and they were telling me that my numbers were low, my numbers were low, uh, oxygen, um, respiratory numbers. And that um, while I was laying there, my right lung just collapsed. And my little brother tells me, uh, it's like one of the freakiest things he's seen and I feel bad that I I had to do that to him. But so this lung collapsed and he he says that I look like I was a a fish that had kind of fallen out of his tank just (gasps) just trying to breathe on the hospital bed. And they pulled my dad and my little brother out of the room. And apparently while I was in there, I flatlined um, and they brought me back and intubated me, which is they put the tubes down my, in my mouth, down my throat to my lungs, and then they ran a tube in my nose to my stomach for feeding me. Um, And so once I was intubated, I couldn't eat, I couldn't drink, and I couldn't talk. So those are just three things that I fucking love to do with my life, and they were just gone in an instant. Um, and so, um, I was only in ICU for 19 days, but I was on life support ventilator for three months. So I didn't eat, drink, or talk for three months. Um, and eating and drinking wise, all they, they had a, it was a tube. It was, 
it was like a clearish yellow and they had carnation um carnation instant meal that they would just it, she had a little uh, syringe and she, it, it, it would run up my nose so i could feel i could feel it cold right here and then i could feel it go cold through my through I, I mean I don't know what it runs through but I could feel like a cold feeling and then they would just it, inject it in my stomach so I never got the satisfaction of having something warm or cold or wet in my mouth it was fucking horrible um, but what was worse than that was not being able to talk and uh, the way that they they adapt to try to help or try to let me communicate with with others was a board that had the alphabet on it and it was A through Z and they, whoever was trying to communicate with me would put their point at one of the letters and I would go yes or no if the, the, for the letters in the word. So say I wanted to write the word neck, I would have to go all the way to the letter N and say yes and then start all the way back at A till I got to E and say yes all the way back to A ridiculous <laughs> but it was all I had um, I remember before my my injury before my accident um, I would ask myself or um, talk amongst friends where it's like you know if you were to die today who would come to your funeral or what would your funeral be like and it's it's always just um, a rhetorical question you can you can kind of guess or assume who would show up but um, when you have a serious injury like this that some don't really know if you're gonna recover from that was as close to a funeral as as I could get and I was overwhelmed with the amount of people and love and just everything that was shown while I was there and I'm so grateful for it and I'm so I'm so grateful that everyone had had um, faith in me that so many people told me oh, oh if anyone's got this you've got this if if anyone can survive breaking their neck you're gonna do this and and when they would say that to me I was like you're full of shit I what I have nothing special I'm not gonna survive this I I, I have no idea what I'm getting into and and I I I appreciate your nice words, but I mean, I you're I don't think you're a hundred percent right, and um, you know it, it was pretty it's it's pretty warming feeling um, looking back now and knowing that you know they were right they might have been blowing some smoke blowing some hot air just trying to say the right things but. I did have it. I, I did make it, and I don't know if that has to do with the person that I am, or just because it was a, a, a shitty situation that was thrown at me that I, I really didn't have a choice in the matter of of whether or not I was going to make it. I, I just kind of always seen in my head like this is what you've got to do to progress in life, and this is what this is what you're going to do, and that's how I've made it to where I am this far. But. Um, I mean, I guess I'll take this opportunity to, to thank everyone who who kind of had faith in me and told me that I, I will make it and survive and uh, saw a better vision than I did because whenever I was there, it was pretty, it was pretty dark. I didn't, I didn't really, I didn't really process how the, the gravity of the situation I was in and I, um, now that I have and lived through it, I look back and I'm just like, well. I'm, I'm glad I made it and I'm glad I had that much support behind me. It's it's just, it's it's amazing. Um, let's get into some funny shit because I don't want to sit here and talk all day about inspirational things. So while I'm in ICU, um, they were giving me some top-notch drugs. So I was on a drip for pain medication, which it wasn't morphine. They were giving me morphine and uh, my body just doesn't react well to morphine, so they'd give me a morphine shot, or it's called a bolus whenever you have a drip. And that would come hit me, I would feel like a like a, a warm sensation, and then it would go away within like two minutes. So they were giving me this a drip of this much, much, much uh, more potent painkiller drug called Dilaudid. And uh, I've seen my share of uh, heroin addict documentaries, and uh, when these guys shoot up, they just, 
uh, and nod out and that is exactly how I fucking felt every time they would give me a, a bolus or a um, just a, a little shot of uh, of um, diluted dilated is what it was called and that was um, I mean, that's one thing. So then on top of that, I was having terrible anxiety issues. So they had me on a drip with um, some sort of anxiety medicine. I don't know the name of that one. Um, and then I was having some terrible sleep issues. So every night they were giving me Ambien to sleep. And as you can imagine, the combo um, made for some pretty interesting days and nights. Uh, there's one one night that I uh, remember that was particularly great, and uh, this was a uh, so I, I I stayed by myself every night in ICU. I wasn't allowed to have any visitors sleep with me in my room. Um, everyone had to leave by 8:30, I think, and so um, there, I was just in there alone. And so they gave me my Ambien one night on top of my drips that I had of other stuff. And um, and so the, this is this night in particular. I'm laying there and I have my eyes closed, and then I open them and I look to the left corner of my hospital room, and there's a huge fucking grizzly bear just standing there. He's not being he's he's not violent. He's he's not acting out. He's just being a real chill grizzly bear. And so I look over at him and I give him the old what's up nod and he looks back at me and gives me a what's up back and then it was understood that I'm chilling in my bed area he's chilling in the corner area we're gonna have ourselves a good night and so I spent the rest of that night hanging out in my hospital room with a grizzly bear um, he, he gave me some motivational points on, on uh, how to live life in a wheelchair. So told me some good stories, and I just told, shared some good stories with him. And um, you know, eventually, I it wore off, and he kind of just disappeared. We never got to say goodbye. And um, that's just one of the that's one of the funny stories of ICU. Um, there's another one uh, that I can remember from. Um, I never watched the show Grey's Anatomy, but my sister was a huge, huge Grey's Anatomy fan. And so it was one episode one time that she, I, it was on while she was at my house or I was at her house. And it was where some crazy guy comes into the hospital with a gun and he just shoots down all the nurses and doctors. It's just pop, 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 shoots them dead. And so that's the episode that I've seen. And um, I was in there, I was in ICU on life support. And uh, I um, something happened with the the ventilator breathing machine that I had, and one of the a bag on it or something in the, in the back of it popped. It was super loud, and like when it popped, my heart just fucking like it was like, and I was scared. I thought it was a fucking gunshot, and so I was laying in bed. My heart's racing. My the 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 machines the ever everything that's. Um, uh, the monitoring my system is just beep 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 going crazy because I'm thinking oh my god there's a guy in here with a gun he's killing all these nurses and he's coming for me and so I'm looking out of my my door and I'm expecting to see some bloody nurses just come crawling on the ground and I, I, I'm, I'm, I start crying I start freaking out uh, I'm having this panic attack and then the nurse walks in and I see her and I'm just like oh God, you made it you weren't shot and she's like what's going on sweetheart what, what's wrong with you and I in that moment I took <laughs> take a minute to realize like okay dude you're freaking out this is not happening this is life is not a fucking TV show and uh, nobody died everyone was fine it was just something that fell down or blew out behind my uh, ventilator machine and it scared the shit out of me and uh, for that, I will never watch Grey's Anatomy again. So I don't care how many good ratings you've got, Grey. You're done. Done with my life. On that note, I'll, I'll finish with a funny story um, about my other favorite nurse that I had. Uh, I don't remember his name. 
I remember he was a guy. I remember he was pretty hilarious. Um, and uh, I, I remember any time I wanted pain medicine or anything just to help me get through the day or a moment or an hour, he he didn't give a shit. He would just go and say, you're in pain? All right, man, here, let me give you a little a bolus. And I, I would take that and just uh, nod out like I, I needed to. And um, they had finally set up my transfer papers for me to transfer from ICU University Hospital in San Antonio to Tier Memorial Hermit here in Houston. And I was really, really, really nervous and anxious about the ambulance ride. Uh, so first things first, I begged my sister to ride in the ambulance with me. And second was I begged the nurse. I said, I'm so nervous. I'm so anxious. I was, please give me some good, good shit that, so I can make it through this, this drive, yada, yada, yada. And he looks at me and he says, don't worry, buddy. I got you taken care of. And that's what I remember from the ambulance drive. Now, my sister has told me the other story. Apparently, it took us five and a half hours to get from San Antonio to Houston, which is ridiculous. I've made it in two and a half. It's three and a half hours on a busy traffic day. But... Um, it took us five and a half hours. Um, the only part of the ride I remember was I, I woke up in the middle and we had hit a bump and my arm had fallen from my chest. And I remember just looking kind of like, ugh, fuck it. <laughs> just let my arm hang and then I went back to sleep. Um, and then I woke up and we were in Houston and we checked into Tier Memorial Herman. And um, with that, that led to rehab where it's some where the stories get a lot more light and a lot more funny because I I had my mental um, what do I want to call it mental checkpoint where I realized okay man it's time to get in the zone it's time to focus it's time to rehabilitate your body and, and let's get as good at this life in a wheelchair as we possibly can and so I'm gonna share those stories with you guys on a the next episode um, Sorry this one took so long to get out. Um, I'm going to do some quick editing, hopefully get it on the web for you guys uh, ASAP. Um, but please like, share, comment, um, do what you can with this one. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.